What's up, guys? I'm Evan Wick. And I'm Patrick Spray. And this is episode three of Washed Washed Up. up. Hopefully that landed. Yeah, on on my end, it sounds messed up. Yeah, I mean, we got the Zoom stuff going on. I can't wait till we have in person just a complete whole production going on. That's going to be sick. But for now, I'm in California. You're in Wisconsin. We're going to have to do this. Yeah, Um, man. I'm excited to do it, though. Off the top of your head. Any big wrestling news today? Today? Oh, yeah. New Gable Stevenson. Gable Stevenson. The guy that I've been saying for a long time is the GOAT. He's back. I've been saying that. He's got, he's got a chance to kind of uh, prove you right. Yeah. I was at the Feral this weekend. I had some insider information. I heard that he was going to be back before everyone else did. I wasn't sure. But now it did seems like Dilks everyone's tell just you that? Who? Dilks? I can't. I can't disclose my information. Okay. I'll say I'll say, actually you know what I'll say no. I won't disclose who told me, but I'll say no, not not Hilger. Okay. Um but Hilger's a heavyweight at, at, at Minnesota. He he should have told me. He didn't alert me. Um but he had a really good showing at Bill Farrell, huh? He did. I thought that was super cool. Me and him, both Bill Farrell champs, two previous Wisconsin wrestlers, Bill Farrell champs. I wonder when the last time that's happened. Um but I was I was blasting that up on my Instagram. He looked good. He beat uh Jordan Wood. Jordan was, was good. Win. Yeah, I thought that would be a tough match. I looked over, because uh, I had just won. And I looked over, and I saw that Wood had like nine points or something. And I was like, ah. Oh. You know, I didn't think that Trent had like not, it, more than nine points at the time. And I was like, I think he lost this. Because I only saw yeah. Wood's points. But he did great. Um, he did really good. Um, I was there, and then the 70 kg champ, who was outstanding wrestler, PJ Duke. Yeah, that's insane, isn't it? That kid is insanely good. Um, just another testament to the high schoolers. He doesn't get enough highlight for how good he is. I mean, I think you get Bo Bassett and them are getting a lot of hype. Yeah, he's not at the same level uh, like popularity as those guys, but definitely one of the, if not the top high school kid coming in. Yeah, I mean, where do you think, if you were to do a pound for pound, where does he rank among the Bo Bassett, Jax Forrest, Luke Lodal, et cetera? Shoot, dude, I don't know. Uh, all right, let's just do it. I'll go. How about Jax Forrest, Marcus. PJ Duke, Luke Lilladal, Blaze Bassett. of a Bassett five. Four Blaze. Five. Did he beat? <laughs> did he beat Jax Forrest? Um, nobody beat Deshaun Garrett, and he beat Dayton Fix. And he beat Seth Gross. Jack Forrest beat Nathan Tomasello. Uh, yeah, but I would say Nathan Tomasello is definitely a lot farther back. And he does not. How do you think Nathan Tomasello does against Dayton Vicks? Not good right now. Not good. I don't know. I'd like to see that old lefty high cross come out. I would love. Now the tables have turned. I was the one with the hot take on Marcus Blaze. Now you're the hard yeah. one with the hot take on Marcus Blaze. Hang on, I forgot about this. Yeah. Bring the hot take jar out because we need to put that one in there. Bad takes. Well, it's not yet. Not yet. You got to be proven right or wrong. Not yet a bad take. Uh, but I'd say PJ. Mark it down. Is, I'm marking it down. I won't forget this. Number four. <laughs> All right. What's your what's your lineup then? Well, I just want to say I think it's got to be Marcus Blaze is going to be number one because he had probably the best. Two? Yeah. I mean, I think he had the best. He had the best tournament than any high schooler that I've ever seen has ever had. He beat three NCAA champions in one bracket. That was impressive. That's impressive. Um, so I think it's got to be Marcus Blaze. And then I'd say Duke and Bassett is a, is a tough number two. Uh, maybe Jax Forrest is up. That's just, dude, it just flip a coin, whoever's going to be in there. But let me just put Forrest, Duke, Bassett. Forrest, Duke, Bassett. Bassett After Blaze. After Blaze. Blaze is number one. He's like solidified easily. Oh, so Lilladol's five then? Lilladol will be five, yeah. Was it Lilladol? They lost, uh, he lost at the U.S. Open to another high schooler who uh, is obviously very good, but I didn't think was was quite the status. Mendoza? Yeah, Mendoza. He lost to Mendoza. You're exactly right. Yeah. Um, 
and he's really good. But nonetheless, I think that um, if you lose to Mendoza, you're probably not um, in the same level as PJ Duke. Because I don't think there's probably a high schooler right now that can stand a chance against PJ Duke. He cooked Andonian. What did I put Lilidol at four? I put him ahead of Bassett, right? You put Marcus Blaze at four. I'll switch those two. Okay. Um, all right. Good recovery. No more. No yeah. more hot. No more bad take. Mid um, take. Mid take. Mid. He's got to be number one in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So yeah, Bill Farrell was Bill Farrow was sick. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Trent. Did you get to see Irie at all? For those of you guys Irie. that don't know, Irie Jackson. He's from Madison. He wrestles for the Jamaican national team. He made his first uh, Bill Farrell appearance. Could have gone. How do you do? But could have gone better. But no, he, he's cool. It's cool to have him out there. I saw him there. Uh, he was uh, after Wayne's. They posted up the the team Jamaica posted up right next to me and Coach Azevedo. So it's yeah. pretty sweet. That's yeah, pretty cool. I talked. Talk I talked to him a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit. I coached Irie for like a year, half a year or something. Yeah, he's AW. Me and Tristan Moran. Um, so that was sweet. Yeah. Right, get over. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's dive right What's into it. What's going on in the college world? Anything big happening that you think? There's like, some upsets. Yeah, there the have been a lot tough... of upsets actually. Oh, Ayala loses to Knox. That was pretty uh, important. That's probably the biggest upset so far. Definitely the biggest. Yeah. Knox, he's got his brother, um, is still in high school, right? He's Tyler uh, Knox. You talking about Anthony, Anthony Knox? Knox? Anthony I Knox. I don't think he's still in high school. He must that, be at I, don't, then. I don't track all the high school kids all the time. But it was an impressive match, I will say, and I will also say the refs were against Knox the entire time. They warned him for stalling twice and it was like they gave Ayala a point for for um, knock stalling that you I totally do. didn't agree with. No, dude, it was like totally. I felt like they're cooking the books here, totally unwarranted. Um, and I hate to complain about refs ever. I really do hate to complain about refs because most of the time I'm watching it, you hear the booing from the hometown crowd. It's more it's just annoying to me that they're begging for stalling calls. Um, but I don't see the refs really, you know, seceding to it. This one, I right. felt like the refs really seceded to it. Knox was not stalling by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah. But good match. Stanford looked good. We got they, Stanford. They had two upsets. Um, um, uh, you had uh, Lorenzo that, Norman beat Brands. Yes, at 74. That's what it was. Or 84. Yeah. Yeah, beat him 3 1. Stemmet lost again to um, Buchanan. Had to have been, yeah. right? Yeah. That's a Wisconsin kid. Yeah, but I mean, it's. Buchanan not not really an upset, but like Stemmett's talking trash out there to Ferrari, and he, what's he starting the year zero and two right now? Yeah, I mean, I think he's got to know. I think that was just a Instagram publicity stunt with him and Ferrari, which was great, and I liked. I liked he the, for the banter. Stars, bro. Shot for the stars. He did. He had a really good match against. I mean, he had a he close match, match, I should say. Yeah, against it was, uh, it was Ferrari. But he got teched by Buchanan, right? I don't know the exact results, to be honest. Dude, I've been watching so much wrestling recently. They're all kind of like running together for me. You think Buchanan wins the title this year? Who's some competition for him? I mean, I, I, it's definitely a plus for him that he's in the Iowa room, I think. Some places have AJ Ferrari ranked number one. How do you think Buchanan does against AJ Ferrari? That'd be a fun match to watch. I, th- I, think, I think that he's... Buchanan is definitely more offensive than Ferrari, but Ferrari's got pretty solid defense, I would think. Right? Um, I don't know. I th- I think I could see Buchanan getting it done. I could see him getting it done. It's just hard to make the common opponent analysis here. Okay. Yeah, AJ Ferrari only beat Stemmet 5-0, and Buchanan, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on it. I'll double check that because I don't Stemmet. want to use that. But um, nonetheless, I just think for what makes Ferrari so good is that he plays the game really well. Like, you know, he's on top. He drops to a he leg, does. drives him out. He doesn't engage in ties a lot, which I think benefits his style. Yeah, he's he, definitely the uh, Dean Heil of our generation. Of a little generation. bit better than Dean Heil. You think he's better than Dean Heil? You're saying, like, I just think he's not as boring to watch as Dean Heil. 
no, no, I'm just saying he's he's not as bad at playing the game. Like Dean Heil really played the game. <laughs> they made a they rule made a, for Dean Heil. A whole entire rule. And for those of you who don't know, Dean Heil is the reason we have the danger rule now, where we count three seconds. Single hands Dean Heil. The only reason, because people were so tired of seeing Dean Heil lock in the crotch and and stay on his back. I mean, it, it was wrestling. It was wrestling at the time. You could yeah. do a leg pass and sit on your back for for the whole minute. You know, I like the danger but, rule now. I was a little worried about it at first. Just and honestly, I think that's kind of how I am with all of the rule changes. I'm kind of getting off on a tangent right now. That's okay. Like Explain. all these rule changes, it's like I'm always a little hesitant just because of the change, but. Wrestlers are pretty pretty easily adaptable, I feel like. like we've you are a skeptic. What? You are a skeptic. I am a skeptic, for sure. I, I'm always like, I'll go second through the door. I'm not going to be the first through the door. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was... Um, remember the That's why you got so many bad takes, though, because you're always like first through the door, whether you, you think so or not. Yeah, but sometimes they land, and it's really good. Sometimes. Yeah. You, and you miss all the shots you don't take. You miss all the shots you don't take. Um, but I remember you were upset about the three-point takedown. I was at first. I kind of like it now, though. That's great. Yeah, it's good. It's more action. I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, I think I think Buchanan could win an NCAA title, but he's going to have to go through AJ Ferrari, which is going to be tough. And AJ Ferrari seems to be very optimistic about his situation at Bakersfield. Um, he's always promoting himself. He's always doing something. He's got NIL deals going. I mean, that dude's just branding himself and training super what you, hard. Um, you what, I hear. Bit, what do you think about it? You that was have, when he wasn't really training. Yeah, but, I, you know, you got your hands on him. I think you got a little bit of a feel for it, right? He didn't feel great when I wrestled him. He didn't feel great. Huh? But, I mean, I'm three or four years out of, or three years out of college now, and he was like, they had just flown him in on like a red eye from florida or something he did a camp in florida and i and he wanted to go live and i was like all right let's do it but he didn't feel great considering that he was like 35 pounds bigger than me um but that's ferrari that was like fucking freaking four months ago <laughs> swear jar uh, hey, take jar swear jar swear jar put my name in there you lose um you but that it. was like that was like four months ago when he wasn't training i think ferrari now is different Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think the Stemmet the Stemmet beef really like that that's the kind of stuff that gets him going. He he kind of thrives off that stuff. Like that's exactly what he needs for his brand to get bigger for him to kind of like I feel like be engaged. I feel like sometimes he's so worried about the imaging and the branding that he forgets about the wrestling until like someone calls him out he's like, "Oh, I got to go beat this guy." Yeah, I think it really helps him. Like he yeah, like, he thrives in that kind of environment when he's when he's you being know, tested. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm done. You good. You know who else had a an upset this week? Braden Scholes at Illinois. Dude, did you watch the he match? Was losing, yeah, he was losing six to one. Reverses this guy to his back for a pin. It was insane. Yeah, and he was losing six one. Nico Ruiz is really good. He's from California. He was a state champion. Yeah, pinned his way through state very easily, and he's had close matches with guys like Mitchell Messenbrink. He's a dog. Yeah, he did. He's really good. Yeah, last year at the journeyman uh, or something. Oh, was it the journeyman or the Cliff Keen? I uh, wasn't at Cliff Keen. Penn State doesn't go to Cliff Keen. Okay, yeah, it might have been journeyman. It's probably journeyman, but he had a close match. And so Skulls, I watched the match. Skulls looked really good. Even though he was down 6-1, he was in scoring position. So it wasn't like he was getting dominated 6-1 in college. No. That's um, kind of the whole thing with that three-point takedown, though, is like a close match can just become not close super fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, so it's yeah, it's six one, but then he reversed him to his back. I mean, it would have been like se at least seven six at that point. So he would have been up. Um, yeah, but he pinned him. It was great. He looked good. He I, looked I was definitely stuck. He reversed long definitely stuck. trying to get off his back. Yeah, yeah, not the best strategy to fight off your back, but nonetheless, no, he just threw his feet to the ceiling and tried to roll backwards. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think it was a great strategy, but he uh, Nico Ruiz looked good too. Um, yeah, no. Kidding. Because I, I got to say, I was very impressed with the way Skulls looked, but Nico Ruiz managed to find a way to take him down twice. Um, pretty good. Um, but, yeah, Skulls. 
super impressed with that. I've been waiting because I remember Ben, Ben was telling me about how good he was going to be when he was in high school. And I've been waiting for him to kind of come on the scene. He didn't have a great Midlands last year, which I thought no, was No, he was redshirting strange. last year, though. He was a redshirt last year. Still, you could still have a good Midlands, you know what I mean? You could. Yeah, just because, like, he had one bad tournament. Like, I'm sure he had a solid freshman season. You know what I mean? Like, not every incoming freshman is going to have a great redshirt year. True. Sometimes just a period. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but I just think now we're starting to see it was just not a great year. Maybe he needed some adjusting. Yeah. Um, but he did end up, end up adjusting. It wasn't that his style just isn't going to work out for college or maybe he's not focused on wrestling anymore. That's I'm, I'm glad to see that Braden Skull is doing good. I do. I think his style, his style is fun to watch. Like he's, no, it's he's definitely a fun to watch. You can tell he's someone who who cares about the sport. Um, yeah. But he's also a gunslinger. Like he'll go out there when it's time to compete and scrap. Uh, yeah, I mean that's, I mean that's a lot of AWA guys, bro. Yeah, that's and the then, mentality that we breed is just like, hey, go out there, have fun, just scrap. You know what I mean? Like lay it on the line. Yeah, I like it. Which is something that's hard to teach, but it seems like. AWA as a whole does a good job of, of letting guys open up and, and reach their potential, um, which is like really, really difficult to teach and instill in guys. So that's super impressive. More guys to stay close. But the rest of that duel, Illinois killed Arizona State. Yeah. Did you it see like, uh, Luffman beat Schultz? I did on a stall call in overtime. Yeah, well. Schultz stalls every match. I know he does, but it's kind of like anticlimactic. It, it definitely was. And Schultz didn't even complain about it either. He's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I think Schultz knows the game he, he plays. Yeah, dude, he, he, would, like, he knows that some refs are going to get him sometimes. Dude, he would like double underhook our guys in the duels because we were in Pac-12s last year with them and just like pick them up and run them out of bounds. And the rest would still call stalling. It's just, it is frustrating to watch Schultz wrestle sometimes. You hate to see anybody get put out of a match because of a stalling call, though. Luffman's sure. good Especially enough you know. to win the match. Yeah, for sure. Luffman's good. He wrestled Tinker last year and kind of put it on him. A Tinker's all he, heavyweight. You remember he upset Trent one year in college? Yeah, anybody anybody who can beat Trent is a solid solid wrestler. Oh, yeah, for sure. What was he, a three or four-time? He was a four-time All-American. Four-time All-American. Trent was a four-timer. That was insane. Very impressive. Very impressive. Um, let's get into it. I got some questions here. Yeah, you got questions. You. Let's go. What is the toughest weight class in NCAA's this year? This year? Mm. Yeah. I'm... Oof. Okay, are we talking about toughest or, like, closest competition? Because, like, last year, 25 was... Anybody could have won it that day, I think. You know? But I don't know mm. if that was toughest weight class because that's not exciting let's go let's go toughest toughest okay yeah mm, i think 74 is gonna be pretty good i got the exact same weight down is that what you had yeah um uh, i saw give me a reason why well one i think o'toole and haynes are that's exactly what i thought yeah they're both top five pound for pound for sure they both top five Plus pound for pound. Match. Yeah, um, that's going to be tough for O'Toole, too. It didn't look like he had many scoring opportunities at the U.S. Open. Or no, not the US Open. Definitely a kid who, uh, he gets better the more opportunities he gets with the guy. He'll figure it out. He'll figure him out. I, I, um, I it's just a matter of how stubborn is Levi Haynes. That kid's good. Yeah, um, but Hamidi's in the weight. Yeah. Lenny Pinto, I heard, is in the weight. Really? Yeah, he's in the rankings. But I feel like Lenny Pinto has been wrestling for like six years. He has. He didn't start. The cool about Lenny Pinto is he didn't start out that phenomenal. And then last year, he was like really up there. He made the Big Ten semis, wrestled Bernie, lost last second. He, he pretty much beat um, all the top guys. Um, right. At the weight level. Not all of them, but a lot of the top guys. So him coming down to 174 next year is going to be, or this year is going to be something to watch. I think that'll be, that'll be an impressive. Um, is your boy Kemp at 74 or is he up at 84? He's up at, yeah, he's at 74. He's not 84. Gotcha. He'll be solid. Good. Any good? Yeah, he's good. He's the type of dude who could take like five months off and 
just son of Lee Kim. What's up? The son of Lee Kim for everybody who don't know. Who Adam son Kemp of is. Lee Kemp. Yeah, Lee Kemp is here in San Luis Obispo. Comes in and coaches us once in a while, which is totally cool. One of the greatest, probably the greatest Wisconsin wrestler of all time, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, three time NCAA oh, champion. Okay. Huge. Um, but any yeah, other way you were thinking of? 165 is open, I think. I was thinking that. I think 84, just kind of the hype around Parker and uh, what the heck's his name? Starachi. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that match alone, I feel like, just kind of puts 84 into that conversation. Yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, we're going to see early, though, how that match goes. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it'll be great for Parker. I know. I think but, I, we kind of talked about that before. But I think I think Parker will be able to adjust like Keegan does because didn't seem like he did too well against Truax last year. I mean, he beat Parker. him. Yeah, it was close. But then he yeah. pretty much dominated the entire field at 184. So I think Parker's also a guy who does a lot better as as um, as the season goes on. That match will be coming up this weekend, right? All Star Classic. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be Please sweet. Be to get that That's out. probably the most exciting thing to watch. That's gotta be up. the premier, that's gotta be the premier match of that thing of that duel, right? It's uh, it's gotta be. Yeah, there's there's no other there's, there's no, no other, other match. match. Yeah, that comes close to that. Um, super cool to see Storaki challenging himself. Um, I agree. I'm. Are you surprised that he came back and wrestled this year? No, not at all. With nil now, no, not at all. I, I kind of figured he would get into the fighting scene because isn't that what he wants to do? I bet he wants to get into the fighting scene, but the problem with the fighting scene is that it's just kind of unpredictable, and I bet whatever he's getting paid at Penn State is very predictable. Um, I bet it's a lot of money. Um, people think? are throwing around... Yeah, oh yeah. People are throwing around numbers like $1.3 million on Twitter. I don't know if that's exactly what he's getting paid, but why would you give that up for a maybe at the at the MMA level? You know, right. I'm, I'm with you. I agree. One more year. Stick with it. One more year. Get your 1.3 million, and then go back. Then go into the fighting. The fighting. Um, Was that 1.3 confirmed? Uh no. I don't think you can for, can confirm any of that stuff. Um, All right. I got this lineup. If you want to hear it, let me hear it. All right. At 125, we got Jory Volk, number three from Wyoming, Good. versus Tanner Jordan. Number six from South Dakota State. Three Not bad. Guys. That'll be a fun match to watch. It would uh, be Volk. A fun match. I got Volk. Volk. Yeah, Volk right. solid. At 133, number two, Nazir Bailey from Little Rock versus number four, Evan Frost from Iowa State. I got Bailey easily. I'll go with Frost just to make it interesting. I like watching him wrestle. He's funky. I do like watching Frost, but um, Nazir Bailey. Bailey. Yeah, he took fourth at NCAA's last year. He had a close match with um, Lehigh Kid. What's his name? One that beat Vito, Vito a couple times. Not Stanage. Not Stanage. No, yeah. Stanage. Stanage is also Lehigh Kid. Um, but he had a close match with him. Yeah. Um, and I think 141. That's Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. What were you saying? No, Good I just job. think that, that says a lot. Like, like he's having really close matches with guys like that. Um, it takes fourth at NCAA's. I think the series really is really, really, really good. I think he's really good, too. All right, number yeah. uh, 141. Number two, Jesse Mendez from Ohio State versus number three, Bo Bartlett, rematch at NCAA Finals last year. That's happening? Yeah. Wow, I didn't even know. This is what I'm saying is, like, how does that not get marketed? Like, I, I'm not hearing about know. this stuff going on. I feel like I'm pretty tapped into wrestling, like, just news in general at all age levels. And the, the NWCA All-Star Classic, very rarely am I, like, aware of what's happening in it. Like they don't yeah, it was just a shame. Really. Totally. I mean, you're having the, the NCAA finals from last year coming up. And, you know, we obviously know about Parker wrestling Sirachi because we're involved with the AWA. But I bet a lot of people don't even know. That's a that's like one of the best matches to be happening in the last two or three years, at least. That's up there with Sirachi and Parker. Yeah, that's way up there. There's, I mean, it's it's happened a couple times. So there's probably less hype around it. But it's just as good That's match. No, yeah, for sure. Who you got in that one? I I think Jesse Mendez is um no well now the gable's coming back, he's pound for pound. But I think Jesse Mendez um 
is pound for pound top three. Mm, that's a hot take. Jesse Mendez torched Yanni Diakamahos at the Olympic team trials this year, and he beat Andrew Alirez um, at the um, some sort of, uh, I don't know but, if it was Rockfin or Beat the Streets wrestling event. There's no way he's top three, top pound, though. No, I'm saying I mean, my thing. I don't think he's earned the right to be top three, but if I were to make my own top three pound for pound right now of who the best guys are, I, I would say Jesse Mendez is there. Like when I watch him wrestle, he has every single he has every base covered, whether it's offense from ties, offense from space, counter offense, top, bottom. Like he is an exceptionally good wrestler. I am very impressed with the way that he wrestles. No, I, I'm I like watching him wrestle a lot. I remember last year, like that was my guy. I loved watching him wrestle. Yeah, I, I think I'm after seeing him at Olympic team trials and then seeing him beat Aliris, I'm like, all right, this kid's this kid's a dog. Yeah, for sure. So you got Mendez in that one then? Yeah, I got Mendez. I I like Jesse Mendez a lot. I'll go with Bartlett just to keep it fun though. Okay, I'll, I'll write all these down and then we'll We're both we'll, uh, bulk. We split at thirty three, we split at forty one. Okay. All right, 149. Number two, Shane Van Ness from Penn State versus number three, Ty Waters of West Virginia. I'm going to pick um, Van Ness for sure. I like Waters. Really? I don't want to split with you because just for the sake of splitting. Um, Ty Waters imp- had a very impressive um, NCAAs last year. He, he beat did. Parco. It did. Be Parco. That means a lot. Um, I think Shan Van Ness is still better than him, though. Personally. Yeah, I mean, I just think he's too solid. But it, it'll be interesting to see what happens on the mat because Waters could turn him. Waters is, is Yeah, it's, and, Waters is tough on top. He's kind of tough in those odd positions. Hammer on top. So um, just for this, you know what? I said I didn't want to do it. But just for the sake of splitting, I'll just say Ty Waters. Literally just said you didn't want to do it. Yeah, well, you 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 gave me a couple at one thirty three and one forty one, so I'll I'll do this one. Ty Waters. All right, cool. One fifty seven, number four, Tyler Kasak from Penn State versus number five, Peyton Keller of Ohio. Wow, Penn State is putting it on the line here. They just like to go and scrap, bro. Dude, that's insane. That's that's really cool. Um, you said uh, Peyton Keller versus who? Uh, was it? Penn State kid, the one that you were just talking about. Oh, Kasek. No, you're talking about Kasek. I won't talk about Kasek. Um, but um, Kasek had a good tournament. He had a really good NCAA tournament last year. But so did Keller. This is probably one of the more unpredictable matches. I would agree. Because they were both kind of just... They popped off at NCAAs. Mm-hmm. Um, and How Keller had a close match with Meckler. How old is Peyton Keller? I don't know. I think he's older. I think he's a like fourth or fifth year. Is he? Yeah. Who are you going with? Surprised he didn't transfer. Yeah. I, if I'm yeah. a betting man, if I'm a betting man, I go Kasek. If you're a betting man, I'll go with I'll go with Kasek as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be a tough one to pass up. Um, and I didn't think that Keller had a close match with Meckler. I'm looking that up right now. Just through. It was eight to seven. Yeah. yeah, so that's not great. No offense to I mean, Lewis Meckler. Yeah, no offense to Meckler. I like Meckler. He's a, that good, was a good, good match. That's a good match for Meckler, actually. Eight to seven. Yeah, but again, if I'm a betting man, I'm not going to assume that Luke Meckler got exponentially better in one year and all of a sudden is having close matches with all Americans. I'm going to assume maybe that wasn't a great match for um, Killer. I would agree. I'll, I'll go with Kasek on that one, too. All right. Yeah. 155, number three, Hunter Garvin, who's already been upset this year, right? Versus number Bunch. four, Peyton Hall of West Virginia. Peyton, Peyton Hall. Hall. Forever. Yeah, Peyton Hall wrestled me when he was a freshman. That was three years ago. That's insane. Yeah, he's good. Um, hot and cold, though. But so is Garvin this year. You think Garvin turns it around and just, like, shocks everyone? Like, yeah, I know I've lost a couple times to watch this. Well, I mean, I it wouldn't be that shocking. Well, I mean, it's based off the season he's had so far, I feel like it'd be a little shocking. 
Yeah, it'd be it'd be, it'd be a little shocking. Uh, but like, no, I don't think so. New ordinary. You you're picking Peyton Hall. Peyton Hall. I like Peyton Hall. I actually, um, I thought Peyton Hall would be an NCAA finalist by now when I wrestled him. He was really good. That's two West Virginia guys. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. I'm telling you. Remember when we were in Missouri and I was talking about West Virginia? They're good. I do remember that. <laughs> Told you. Yeah. Told me. Uh, you know, yeah. who's, side note, I was just looking at some uh, of the upsets that Flo puts out. Like, they put out an entire page of upsets. Dude, Penn's actually got some solid wrestlers, bro. Yeah, Penn just has a good infrastructure. I mean, they've got an, an incredible RTC. Last year, they had Joey McKenna, Jordan Burroughs, David McFadden. I mean, they've got a lot of really good guys scrapping there. It's kind of – it kind of fell apart this year. Um, Burroughs has been looking for guys to train out there. Um, did they get Burger out there too? They did get Burger out there, but he's he's fighting now. Yeah, uh, Burger made the transition. I'll pick Garvin on that one then, just to keep it fun again. I will actually. I never bet money, but I would bet money that Peyton Hall takes that one. Bet money. I hope he loses, so I can just put that in the bad take jar, bro. It's it's feeling bare. It's feeling bare. Like you want to you want to do uh, twenty bucks and do an air handshake. 20 bucks. I don't feel that confident in Hunter Carver to do 20 bucks worth, bro. All right. Let, let, if you want to do that at a different weight class, I'm all I'm down for it. Like at 141, I think that'd be a good one to do with Mendez and Bartlett. Ooh, see that's see like I said I'm not a betting man. So that's not, that's why I don't put that money up. That's a 50 that's a yeah, coin toss. See? That's what I'm I don't put money on coin tosses, you know what I mean? Yeah, but this is a friendly bet. That's where you got to do the the the, the bets. All right, All right. Maybe, maybe we'll work that out. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. 174, right. number two, Levi Haynes from Penn State. Dude, the whole Penn State roster is here. Versus number three, Cade DeVos of SDSU. Levi Haynes next. I know what you're going to say already. Next. Yeah. All right. Uh, 184, number one, Carter Storacci of Penn State versus number two, Parker Kekheis of Northern Iowa. Sorry, Parker. I got Storacci. My talks out there wanting. Uh yeah. Okay. I'll go with Starachi as well. Okay. Interested to see what the ninety seven um uh, matchup is. It's number five, Stephen Little of Little Rock versus number nine, Zach Braunagle of Illinois. That's going to be an ass beating. Stephen Little is really good. Yeah. Do you think Braunagle's can't even compete with him. I think Braun Eagle's kind of a Greco guy. Um, he could he could slip something in there if Little's not wrestling well. But, dude, hats off to Little Rock. They got two guys in this yeah, event. Yeah, for sure. In the All-Star Classic. That's big. It's kind of cool uh, that like some of these smaller schools are representing. Especially like with the new NIL stuff. Like That's kind of against the whole thought process of NIL, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, what do you think? Do you think it just goes to show that NIL, yes, can eliminate small programs by taking away their good guys, but it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, development is going to be better at those schools? Well, I don't think development would necessarily be better at the bigger schools. I think the money's just there. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what the smaller schools are worried about is that like they're going to develop all these guys and then all of a sudden these bigger schools are going to bring in all the money and these kids will leave. So, hey, like like you said, Peyton Keller, hats off to you for staying, bro. Yeah, hats off to him for staying. But I think that, that stuff kind of just throws a wrench in my chain because it's like, for me, I think where the best partners are is probably where you're going to get better. Um, but it seems like Little Rock, um, West Virginia, now Ohio University – they're kind of breaking that mold. Like, I guess, I guess there is something to be said still about coaching and development of guys who Stephen Little wasn't necessarily that good. Um, I don't remember hearing much about uh, Peyton Keller. I've never heard much. Of, I know Peyton Keller from Ohio. I think he, like he's from Ohio. Like I knew yeah. who he was. I don't know if I've ever really heard much of Stephen Little. But no, I also, Stephen Little. Do I like when I was in college? I was only focused on college guys, and not. I didn't really know any high school kids, but now that I'm like coaching high school kids, I know most of the high school kids and not a ton of college kids anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of that I can't like process both, but all right. Yeah, I, I really let go of it. Yep, ready to go. What'd you say? 
I really let go of like high school stuff when I was in college. I didn't care. It yeah. seems like it's a lot more glamorous now. Like it's kind of in your face with flow and stuff. But God, when we were Gable was good in 2018. Who was the pound for pound best in 2019? I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you. Just at the time when I was competing in college, I didn't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Um, would that have been Brooks? Um, yeah, probably Brooks. Yeah, because I think those guys were good. Twenty twenty or twenty twenty one was Braxton when we got him. Twenty twenty, yeah, the COVID year. Twenty nineteen was Aaron Brooks then. Yeah, I just, think about that. Like, how does Braxton's celebrity compare to Bo Bassett's and Luke Lillidall and Marcus Blaze? Like, those guys are so much more well known than those guys were. Than Braxton was. Um, Braxton was like Braxton was a pretty well known name at that time because he was kicking the crap out of everybody out of like Super Thirty Two. He's going out there and winning medals overseas, like same as these guys. But I think he was getting the same hype as they were. I think maybe okay. it's matured with like social media and stuff over the last couple of years. You know what I mean? Like more and more, that's kind of the thing is like get that out there. Yeah, but. I think Braxton was pretty heavily, like, in out there for you. I I disagree. I don't think Braxton was nearly getting as much hype from people blasting him out on social media. I think he was good. He was a Super Thirty Two champ. He was a world. He was a world champ. I, he wasn't wrestling a whole lot of like former NCAA champs. No, he wasn't. Exactly. But, so I guess it's just I guess it's just a, a Bo Bassett. He beats like an Anthony National. That was really cool. But like when you, when I was at US Open and you watch the US Open finals for U20 and Bo Bassett was wrestling, it was like everybody at the tournament held around that mat because Bo Bassett is just like a celebrity now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like all these little kids love just watching him. Love him. Love him to death. So I think it's a lot more in your face. If you're if you're a college guy now, it's kind of weird that you don't know who Bo, who Bo Bassett is. Yeah. But when I was in college, like – you could get away as a college guy not knowing who Braxton Amos was. Right. All right, let's finish these out because I have a thought that I want to go over about, like, the type of influencers there are in wrestling right now and kind of who they compare to in the real world. All right, let me hear it. Uh, well, let's just finish this. Let's get into heavyweight real quick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm with Stephen Little, too, by the way. Okay. 285. Number three, Nick Feldman versus – or from Ohio State versus number seven, Tay Gadiali from Campbell. Feldman. Next. Yeah. Campbell, Campbell did good. He was an All American last year, but he had some bad losses too. He's, he went, he goes to Campbell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but he had, he had some bad losses last year that really kind of tarnished his reputation. But he did pop off at NCAAs, which is cool. But Feldman is just, he's another guy who was a hammer coming out of high school. He, he has the pedigree. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Beat him. For sure. Yeah. He's up. But no, I was thinking like, isn't it kind of funny? Like with this new NIL, some of these kids are kind of coming into school with personality. Like uh, Ferrari, he reminds me of like the old WWE type personality. Yeah. Like this Friday night, we're going to, we're going to duke it out. Yeah. 365 pound deadlift, baby. Yeah, I mean, I think Ferrari's in his own category. For sure. But that's what I, so like, he's more WWE stuff where I feel like Bassett, he's more like the new age of like just the influencer type thing. Okay. And I just think it's kind of funny how some of these different kids market themselves. Like, I think Starachi's kind of like the UFC thing. Like, the we're going to get on Twitter and just call people out, right? Say, hey, you're soft. Yeah, I guess, I mean, it's interesting to see how now they're capturing their audiences. Bo Bassett just seems to put a lot of content out there. Like he'll just throw up his, oh he'll throw up his, his schools that are looking at him or he'll throw up just his match at one time. But um, yeah, I do think Ferrari's going about it a different way. The interesting thing was like when we, when we got into college, there was nobody doing that. No. Well, there was no need. Was, NIL wasn't really a thing. No, NIL wasn't a thing and nobody really, I don't think any high school kids knew, um, that they could make money off of their Instagram following or just you remember, know, market themselves. 
I know you grew up in California, but did you ever get Big Ten Network out there? Of course, yeah. Okay, so did you like? Did you ever just go home from practice and watch the duel, like the duel that was on that night? Um, if it was a big one, yeah, but we we had like on demand and we were able to like, um, okay. yeah, so we could do like on demand. Was or, it or, like just the coolest it. thing to like watch a duel live? when you were in high school or middle school? Yeah, I don't remember watching too many duels in high school. I would just watch matches on flow. All right, I guess we're different then. You know what I will say, speaking of duels, I bet being a kid and watching the 2018 Penn State versus Ohio State duel probably had to have been insane. Yeah, I, like I remember those old Penn State-Iowa duels back when David Taylor was on the team, Tony Ramos was there. Like yeah, yeah. Wa watching Tony Ramos stick this guy at 33. I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Conway. Probably Conway, Jordan Conway, yeah. Yeah. I, dude, I remember watching that and I was like, holy crap, that's insane. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, and you know what's a, a couple cool matches to watch is David Taylor's rivalry with Derek St. John. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. Because the first couple of years, he was, it was a good rivalry with St. John and then he just started beating up on Loft House, bro. I hated watching that. Yeah, you're an Iowa fan. That had to have been tough to watch. I, I, I love watching. I grew Taylor. up an Iowa fan because my dad's an Iowa fan, so like we were always watching that and cheering for them. And then uh, I started to get into high school, and I was like, mm, maybe I don't really want to go to Iowa. Yeah, I mean, I think the like what a lot of people don't know about the um, the David Taylor and, and Derek St. John thing was Derek St. John. Taylor was considered the better wrestler at the time, but Derek St. John had a win over him that summer going into their freshman year. And so it was kind of like, ooh, who is better? Who is the better wrestler? Is it Derek St. John or is it David Taylor? And then David Taylor pulled away. And I think that's when Penn State started to pull away from Iowa. That's when they started to pull away. Yeah, that's when they had Ed Ruth. They had, who was the other top dog there? Well, they had McIntosh was in there. They had a whole lineup. Their whole team. Yeah, their whole lineup was insane. Rutherford came in there after them. Rutherford was after them. Yeah, and then oh, Nico Megalus. Yeah. Megalus was yeah great. He was a, he was probably the last really great one twenty five pounder that they had. That they had, they had Soriano yeah. for a year. They did have Soriano for a year. That was cool. I remember when Soriano wrestled uh, Gilman from Penn, at at Penn State. That was sick. That was a good duel. Wasn't there like a whole ankle gate after that thing? Yeah, that was why like uh, Soriano left. Yeah, he left and went to Rutgers after that. He went to Rutgers, then he went to train to ASU, and then he went to Michigan. He was all over the place. Yeah, he's been all over the place. All right. Man's a mystery. Yeah, right. All right, back on task here, Evan. We're getting off the rails. Mm -hmm. Get me back on track. All right. What's next? Okay. You had, you had all these great ideas. What, what are they? Who? I've got a couple things here. Who, when you think of, like, childhood greats, who do you think of? And I thought this was really interesting because I talked with, I was at an event with, um, uh, it was like the America's Cup or the Captain's Cup in North Carolina and Mark Harwell was on my team. And he was talking about some kid who used to just kill everybody when they were kids and used to crush him too. And I forget the name. I'd have to reach back out to Mark to know who he was talking about. Do you know um, where he's from? No, I think maybe, I have no, I have no clue. It, it, would be, it would be all speculation. So I'm not even going to say. Dude, but um, who do you think of when you think of like that kid back in the day? It was like this guy was crazy. Like who was our, the Bo Bassett of when we were kids? Yeah, and I can tell you when I was a kid, and this wasn't even when I was in. I was that deep into wrestling. Um, I was at a local Cagua tournament, which is like a tiny little tournament in California. It's a California Age Group Wrestling Association, mm -hmm. and. Um, I remember all the kids. This was before I knew anything about wrestling. All the kids were like, I don't forget them. Go ahead. Sorry. They were like, Cato Levis just lost. And I hadn't even known who Cato Levis was, but everybody at this tournament you were like, had no. heard. Well, no, I didn't even know. I was like, who's Cato Levis? He had lost at some other tournament, but he was so good in California that at this tournament that was in SoCal, Southern California, Okay. Kids were talking about the fact that Cato Levis had just lost that day to some some kid while he was at like a different tournament. I don't know if it was out of state but or like in, in the middle of California or what. 
Uh, right. But the kids at the tournament were talking about it. And I remember that was the first I ever heard of Kate Olivas. And he ended up being a state champ his freshman year in California, killing everyone. But then he had to he had to drop out because of concussions. He got too many concussions and couldn't wrestle anymore. Really? Yeah, but he was a That's- dog. I I remember he would come to SoCal Wrestling Club, which was where me and my twin brother Xander were wrestling. We yeah. weren't that good. We were like probably second or third or fourth at like the California State Tournament when we were kids, like 12, 13 years old. And he would come to our room to wrestle with us. He was a year or two younger than us. So if I was 13, he was like 12 or 11. And he right. was 20 pounds smaller than us. And he would kick the crap out of us. Like it was the most, anytime I would walk, it was at Santiago High School. Anytime I would walk into the Santiago High School room and see his dad there, I'd just be like, oh my God, I'm going to wrestle this kid. Tonight's going to suck. Yeah, yeah and it was like, the only two good kids at the club, decently good kids. Decently good kids. Me and Xander. He came to wrestle. He came to us. wrestle. He didn't come to wrestle anyone else. Right. All right. I wrote down a couple of names, um, just so I wouldn't forget. I remember thinking Kyle Beardumpel was always like one of the top guys at Fargo every year, and I just couldn't understand. I was like, "How is this kid so good? Where did he go, dude? I don't even know. I know he's from New Jersey. No idea where he wrestled college." I know that yeah. name. I know Kyle Bird- Birdful. Yeah, like he was like always winning freestyle. Like he's coming out. Of, I remember he came out of nowhere for freestyle one year, and then he was like winning Greco all the time. It was like insane. But um, Sean Cannon was another one. Oh, dude. Okay, I got a couple more that are coming back. See, I knew I I would get some more after I started thinking about this. Uh, Sean, Sean Cannon. Cannon. Did you wrestle Sean Cannon? Never wrestled. No, I never wrestled him. But I remember like. Always winning, like winning tournaments. Always, I was like, oh I, my god! I used to wrestle Sean Cannon a lot. He was a really good kid from Nevada. He used yeah, to, he used like to Nevada, crush right? me. Yeah, he's from Las Vegas. I would always wrestle him when we were kids. He was one of those kids who I would get tech by in like the second period, and then when I got into high school, I beat him. And like, dude, that just was like so cool for me to beat a kid who who I couldn't even dream of beating when I was younger. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um. All right, I'll just I'll throw out a couple more names. Uh, Nolan Hellickson from Iowa. That kid always used to beat me at these duels over in Tennessee when we would drive over there. It was always close, but like just could not beat this kid. And he was always winning national tournaments when we were kids too. Um, Alex Deringer is another one, right? He was a kid that I kind of looked up to. I was like, holy cow, that kid's really good. Um, but you talking about when he was in high school? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm obviously younger than him. He was never my age but um who is the texas kid that went to virginia he just took second a couple years ago at 133 a couple years ago uh oh you're talking about um jack mueller jack mueller yes i yeah. remember him he was really he was good. a dog when we were kids yeah he's from texas yeah um he's good he, i mean he ended up being good too for sure really good it's a it's almost cooler to hear the story, though, of, like, the kids who you never heard of who were just dogs when you were kids, and then they quit wrestling or they something happened. It's unfortunate, but it's, like, cool Dominic to hear more. Dominic Sudemeister. I feel like I that know that name, but he didn't. From wrestle? Michigan. He went to Davidson. Like, he was in that oh. area. He, so, he yeah. grew up with Mark Hall. Um, who else was over there? There was someone else over there that was really good growing up with those guys. But... Dude, Dominic Sudemeister was an animal. Dude, it it was like, did you go ever go to Reno or Tulsa? I went to Tulsa once. How'd you do? Uh, two and two maybe. Dude, I lost my second match. I thought I was winning this whole time against the Miron kid from Ohio. I get off, like we shake hands, and then he raises the other kid's hand. I was like, what the what the hell just happened? I look over, it's five to four, and it's like the other color. I was like. My dad didn't go, and the first thought I had was, this is going to be a long ride back. Because the whole way, I'm just going to be thinking about, like, what this conversation with my dad's going to be. He's like, <laughs> you thought you were winning? Like, what What? What are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. That sucks. No, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad, though. It was kind of funny. I remember going to Tulsa and going one and two my eighth grade year and just being like, God, how, how much better? I don't even wrestling for, like, 
five years and I was like, how much better at this sport do I have to get? I went one and two. But that like those tournaments, Reno and Tulsa are the ones if you think you're good and you're under the age of what, thirteen? Are we talking about eighth grade? Just like those tournaments, the Tulsa and Reno, really they're tough around thirteen and under, right? Yeah. If you're thirteen, fourteen years old or younger and you really want to test yourself, go to Reno and find out. Cause you will find out. Anybody who's anybody is going to those damn tournaments. We would I, we would go all the way to Reno. Reno was a marathon. Tulsa was a sprint. Oh, hey, all the way for you in California is a lot different than all the way for people like Midwest. Uh, well, we drove. We drove to Tulsa. My mom drove me to Tulsa. That's a long drive. Twenty five hours to drive us to Tulsa. Twenty five hours. What's the longest to, trip you've ever? taken just to drive to a tournament was it that that it's a go one and two i bet she had a great time and she drove us back well does she drove you there thank goodness my twin brother xander made it to the blood rounds but we didn't get any hardware that's okay crazy xander, xander made up for it um yeah and we had kate brock was in that bracket kate brock was really um, good girl too K Brock was really good growing up. But then, dude, we went. I remember going to like Reno and we, I, I lost to this kid. I got teched by this kid who then got teched by this kid. And that kid then got beat up by this kid. And then that kid got smoked by Keyshawn Hayes in the finals. Oh, Keyshawn Hayes was really good. Missouri. Keyshawn Hayes was an animal. And I just I remember watching them and being like, how good. Like, I, you got to be really good at this damn sport, I guess. Like, that was the wake-up call. How, I'm looking at myself, and then I'm looking up at Keyshawn Hayes, and I'm like, how do I get there? Yeah, but it's inspiring. Like, there's there's moments in the sport, like, if you're a parent and you really want to get your kid good, I know going to a tournament like that is – it hurts their confidence, but it's really inspiring for a kid to see that. Like, I remember I went to – here's another one. I went to Ironman my sophomore year, and uh, my sophomore year – and this kid from Pennsylvania at 106 or 113 texts everybody in the bracket. This kid from Franklin Regional. Oh, I don't think I know who it is. Spencer Lee. You right? should know. Spencer Lee crushed everybody. And it was like kind of like it hurt my confidence to know that there was someone, a freshman out there, who just teched and pinned everybody through the tournament that I didn't even place at. But it was also very inspiring of like, I can get this good. Like there's guys like that who are that good. I want to be like that, you know, and I right. want people to like to to be on notice of me the way I was on notice of Spencer Lee at the time. That was big. Do you think a lot of that had to do with your coach? With John? Yeah, Coach John was good. He inspired me to wrestle a lot. and But I think it, he was just smart enough to know, you know, maybe Evan's not there. And maybe he's going to go to Ironman and get his butt kicked. But it'll be good for him, and he'll, and he'll be able to see where he's at, and he'll be able to be inspired by you know the the success of these other kids. I think having that perspective is important, especially as a parent or a coach. It's like if you go to these tournaments, and you even if you expect them to do well, and they don't perform to like that level, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Have the perspective that like I don't need you to be great right now, right? I don't want you to be great right now, right? Just keep getting better. Yeah. Go to a tournament, have your kid go to a tournament, and get his butt kicked, right? I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Good well, for you. Yes. It, as much like, as you can. It, like, getting your butt kicked is not a bad thing. No. It's good for you. I mean, I, I don't think you should be trying to maintain. You shouldn't be worrying about your kid's confidence. You should be worrying about how good he is. You know what I mean? Go out there and let him see how good he is and see where he has to be. Yeah, and then build his confidence back up for him. Yeah. I'm telling you, that... That watching Spencer Lee at that tournament was huge for me. It was very inspiring for me, and I, I really, I really turned up after that, and really um, got serious about wrestling and serious about my training after that because I wanted, I wanted people to be on notice of me the way that they were of of Spencer Lee. I, it was so cool. You know? That is great. I like that. But All yeah, right. that was. Let's do one more thing. Right, it's getting late here, dude. We got to do it at super late my time so we can get you on because you're busy. Yeah. Well, once I'm really in Wisconsin, then... Me? Dude, I was thinking about this today. You might be, like, the second most traveled man that I know. 
I hate it. I hate traveling. Did you travel all the time? You come to Wisconsin probably what once every two three months. Yeah, I'm a I'm a wrestling coach, so I have to travel for Cal Poly to travel at every yeah. duel and every match. Um, I'm a competitor, so I got to travel to all my competitions. You're I have a long distance girlfriend. All the time. Yes, I'm traveling across the world or across the country, and then I have a long distance girlfriend. And it's like I got to travel to see her, but that's those are like my vacations. I actually enjoy those. I just hate the traveling. You get a vacation like, once a month. Yeah. Some people so, are like, I'll get one every five years. You're like, ah, once a month, I'll be somewhere else. Yeah, it's not bad. Kind of cool. Um, and then, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's definitely a perk. I feel like I travel a lot, too, for just wrestling tournaments, but definitely not as much as you. It's cool when it takes you to the cool place like Vegas. It's, it's cool. Yeah, no, Vegas is always a fun trip. Yeah. But um, what is your craziest cutting weight story? <laughs> it was in college. Was it uh, the Whitewater Duel? Or the Maryland duel? The Maryland duel, right before that, yeah. Was it that crazy? Dude, I didn't realize I was wrestling until the day before. The night before. I had like 12 hours, and this is Xander's fault. I hope he watches this, because I still hold a grudge about this. So Xander was going to be starting that duel, right? But he had just kind of gotten hurt out at Cliff Keen. Yep. And then he came back. He's like, yeah, I think I'm going to wrestle. Monday, Tuesday, it's like, all right, cool. Then I'm not going to worry, like, super hard about my weight. I'll just keep it kind of within reason. Obviously, I didn't. <laughs> I'd come into practice on Wednesday, like, 12 over, and Xander's telling me on the walk to practice, hey, just letting you know, I'm a little hurt today. I don't know if I'm going to wrestle tomorrow. I was like, uh, I, I might have said some explicit words where I was like, you couldn't have told me this, like, two days ago. You bad word. That's where you learn not to put trust in the word of an 18 or 19 year old kid. Yeah, no kidding. I learned my lesson and that day. Happened again. Xander was, because I remember Xander being like, no, I should be good. I should be good. And then one yeah, day he just decided, like one day he couldn't walk because his hip hurt. And he was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not wrestling. That's what it was. It was his hip because he wrestled with Crystal. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I found out I have like, I didn't tell the coaches what my weight was, obviously. They told me, hey, you're going to be wrestling tomorrow. I was like, sounds good. I'll be ready. And, dude, I spent. Well, so it's I, 149. Yeah. And you weighed I what? Was 12, I was 12 pounds over. So I was 161. Okay. And uh, I have that practice. I, it was a decent practice. I had like a three-pound practice. I'm like, all right. So I just put my crap on. I got in the sauna. Pra like I worked out for another hour probably. I went home. I think I was like six over going to bed that night. I come back early the next morning, get another workout and try to get like another two or three off. And then whatever I'm, I'm passing now. I'll just tell my friends. I didn't, I skipped class that entire day. I didn't go. Cause I was, I was too heavy. I needed to lose weight. So like every other like hour I'm back in the wrestling room, like I'm maybe having a little bit of water and like, maybe an apple just so I can like function throughout the day. But because I knew that I was just going to keep getting workouts in, I wasn't going to try to starve myself, uh, starving myself for 12 hours and getting four workouts in wasn't going to allow me to wrestle very well. So I just, kept there's probably some of there. that in there. Yeah, for sure. So like I would lose three, I'd get like half a pound back up and then I'd lose that again. Mm -hmm. I remember that was a crazy, do you remember that match? I do. You actually won it. I did. I want it. I looked like death, but you looked like you were ready to do everything in your power to not win it. I want, yeah. But he wouldn't let we me. Had up. some of those matches. He would he not let you. He would not he let would you. Would not let me lose that match. Yeah. <laughs> did I? Re <laughs> Trevor Brandvold yelled something to me during that match, and it was the simplest thing, but I needed to hear it in that moment, and he just yelled, "Hey." Bat, you don't need your leg in to ride the guy because I had already gotten reversed like three times. I was like, smart. "Oh, that's pretty smart. Maybe, I, maybe I don't need to ride ride with a leg in." Yeah, and this was at the time of one hour weigh-ins, right? Yeah, it was terrible. I remember coming off the mat and my skin hurt like to the touch, and that that was on Big Ten Network too. So I. I went back and watched it afterwards, and I remember, like, I just fell down back before the curtain. So, like, the camera pans to you, 
as you're walking out and it just caught me like just bending over and hunched over like dying back there i was like oh shit i should have gone to the back before i started doing that skin <laughs> hurt like there. hot no so like you know like when you lose a lot of the moisture or like the water in your in your body and your skin like your skin kind of just gets dry oh yeah well i just wrestled like seven and a half minutes or like it was a long time i was out there and my skin like t hurt to the touch like it was that dry wow i just had no water in my body no i remember um tristan moran cut a ton of weight and he would come off the mat after like t a 10 minute match and be dry as a bone <laughs> He was it wasn't so hot enough. It wasn't, it wasn't as hot as Arizona. He couldn't sweat. Dude, he couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't sweat half the time. And I remember he'd be like bundled up, and he'd put our room up to like ninety degrees every day. And I would get, I would be furious because I wasn't cutting a lot of weight. And I'd be like, dude, what, what are we doing? And he'd layer up in like, like three or four layers of sweats. And then he would go, and he'd make weight. He always made weight. But, always. Um, yeah. He, I remember he wrestled Purdue and went into like overtime or something and he came off the mat and Bono would always like pat him on the back and be like, good match. And then he'd just be like dry as a bone, like bone dry. Tristan Moran was after a overtime match, probably close to overheating from exhaustion. And Tristan Moran, um, I remember what was the Wisconsin Tuesday, um, Tuesday fight nights or something, Instagram page where they would do like Tristan Moran versus so-and-so they would match guys up. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, there was some Instagram page that was like matching up the Wisconsin guys at the time with other okay. with other guys in Wisconsin, and they would like do like a match, a theoretical matchup, and uh, they did Tristan Rand against somebody, and they did like the positives and the negatives. Was tough, it Tough Tuesdays? Tough Tuesdays, yeah, Tough Tuesdays, and they matched some Tristan up with somebody, and they were like pros of Tristan Moran, funky. Uh, oh. defends cracked down really well, and they said, like, cons gases instantly, like, just, just <laughs> would gas instantly, go out there, somehow win, dude. Beat the dude, beat Nick Lee, yeah, dude. He beat gassed Chad Red out, he beat Chad Red, and I'm telling you, he Mitch was gassed McKee. out every second of it. Yes, gas out every second of those matches would come off that mat dry as a bone. You know what? The funniest thing I thought about Tristan Moran, this is the minimalist thing that you could think about with Tristan Moran, but it always cracked me up. The way he got up off the mat every time, just roll back, fix the knee pad, put his hands behind his back and just like waddle up to his feet. It cracked me up every time he got up. Just the worst kind of body posturing you can do in a match. Just just displaying how exhausted you really are. All right, hey, yeah. tell me your, sorry, we got off on a tangent. Tristan Moran, shout out. Uh, what's your craziest weight cutting story? And then we'll wrap it up. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I, if I have the craziest weight cutting story, like a you specific story, but what's up? You hated cutting weight. Of course everyone does, but I, yeah, I really don't do it anymore. I'm, I cut like four or five pounds maximum now. You stopped um, doing it. Bro. You, you like, that's why you went up to 65 because you could have still made 57 for sure. I could have still made 57, certified for 57, two years. I know. Um, no, three years of college. Yeah, um, but no, my sophomore year of, of wrestling was, my sophomore year of high school was the last year that I really cut. I cut from 145 to 120. It was miserable. Um, and I remember the whole year we did certifications. I was 0.8 over and it took me like two hours to lose the 0.8, like going pretty hard, having sweats on. And we turned our room up to like 90 degrees. And I'm like, I would start jogging and every muscle in my core cramped up immediately just as soon as i took the first step to start jogging every muscle in my core cramped up so it was bad but i remember my dad was like whatever you want after season whenever you want i'll, I'll get it for you whatever meal whatever food you want and so i wrestled at state i took fifth at state after the consolation matches there's a three hour or four hour break and then there's the finals so i take fifth and i'm like oh, you told right, me this we're going yeah we're going to eat right now right and so we go over i don't know what that thing is yeah that was funny did you see that i did i don't know what it is jake's uh, got us from this janky ass website maybe yeah uh, uh swear jar you can swear um oh, but and i was like all right let's go we're going in and out 
We went to In and Out, and these are like real. Every place that I'm telling you, we got real meals. I'm not gonna tell you what the meals were, but I'll tell you they're real meals, like not like snacks. We go to In and Out, we go to Taco Bell, we go to Panda Express, we go to Popeyes, and then we went to this place called Dwarves, which is an ice cream shop, and we got like a six scoop Sunday each. Me what? and Tanner did six scoop Sunday each, and then our team dinner was at um black angus do you guys have that in the midwest yeah steakhouse. yeah steakhouse and then we go to black angus all in one night i'd never had so much heartburn in my life what'd you wear and then i don't know that night but i'll tell you three days later i came into the wrestling room i weighed in at 123 was the weight last day at state because there's a two pound allowance and it's a two-day tournament so the first day you get two pound allowance third day you get the third pound allowance. so 123 the next three days later i came back i walked into the wrestling room and everybody looks and they go evan is that you it was one of those it was one of those things right yeah like it's me and they're like oh my god like you are gigantic my bones hurt my skin was stretched out like but i I never felt better in my life. I was say, you know, you know who else loved that feeling? Just Who's that? being fat and happy. Tristan Moran. Tristan Moran. He loved Tristan it. Tristan Moran loved it. He wanted to get up to two hundred every single off season. He loved it. Yeah, but he, he was our personal Patty Pimblet. Dude, he was gigantic. He, he sent me a picture one time, like two weeks after. Um, yeah, two weeks Wait, after. Two weeks after COVID canceled NCAA's, and he was probably like seven eight percent body fat when he said this picture he must have been 20 percent body fat it was insane it was it's so fat yeah it was insane uh i could find that picture um send it to you but um we should post it on <laughs> we should post it and tag it on this like clip it should be the cover of this of this podcast uh but so anyway i go in everyone's i'm unrecognizable and they're like what do you weigh and I step on the scale and I weighed 156 pounds. So in three days, I gained 36, or I gained 33 pounds. 33? It's a big boy yeah. right there. Yeah, but it was like Panda Express. I would eat a whole, like a whole box of Oreos as a snack. Oh, yeah. Like that's how much. Like not just a sleeve, like a whole box of Oreos as a snack. That's probably. I, I put down chips on Oreo. I know what it's like. Yeah, yeah. But that's the. That's the craziest cutting weight story that I have personally. But I have other stories. Maybe we could talk about them later about other guys I knew who were cutting weight. I know some stories about other guys cutting weight. I got funny stories about other guys cutting weight. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the stories. But. All right, man. Well, I'm glad we were able to get this through. We had a busy week last week. That's why we weren't able to get one out there, right? Traveling around coaching. I was in Kansas City. You were running around. You had to go to New York to, to compete at Bill Farrell. Yep. Uh, I don't know if I told you. Hey, congrats, Bob. Finally. The whole podcast I didn't hear. Congrats. And now I get one. I gave a congrats to Trent before I gave one to you. Dude, what? We talk all the time. You didn't give me a congrats. I'm kidding. But uh, For sure. no, I, thank you. Thank you, you wrote really well, bro. You kicked the crap out of everybody. Thank you. I felt great. I feel great in my training. I feel, I feel like uh, I'm on top of the game now. Finally, get my excitement for the for. I've always been excited to wrestle, but I'm getting my excitement for competition back. That movement exploration, bro. Yeah, CJ Kabliska, he's the guy. Yeah. Well, this was episode three of Washed, Washed up. up. That was terrible, but that's okay. See you guys. That was good. Peace.